I suppose I owe you a bit of an explanation of why I'm toting around a front tire. I mean, my grandmother is pretty incredible. I couldn't actually sign up and ride because I wasn't allowed to. As soon as the dust fly, I go, I take off and go. Look to the left, look to the right, nothing. My name is Amanda Zitto. If you are new here, I make motorcycle travel vlogs, how-tos, and general encouragement for you to get out and do the thing. I am on White Pass currently. I haven't ridden this road since I did it on the Honda Shadow, and it's just as beautiful as I remember it. Of course, it's sunset, so that helps. <laughs> that is Mount Rainier right there, and I got a boogie so that I can find a campsite before it gets dark. Story of my life. Well, our first trick for a campground is closed. Oh, dokey. Awesome, okay, and it's near a spot where I could park my motorcycle right outside the window. Okay, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. <laughs> Gonna book on the website because as, as there's always like an added stupid fee for walk-ins, which I just don't get. But, but she was super nice and told me that already. So I can book it online and she's gonna hold the first floor room so I can see be right next to my motorcycle. $90 didn't plan on spending, but such is life. I will, I will explain more about why we're getting a hotel room when I get to the hotel room. <laughs> we're in a hotel room. First, before we get into anything, can we just appreciate how much nicer it is to have the stuff sacks for soft saddlebags. It made it so that when I used to have to get a hotel room, I would have to make one trip for the tank bag and the helmet, another trip for the duffel bag, another trip for clothing, and another trip for everything in my other saddle bag. And now it's only two trips. Duffel bag and tank bag, and then the stuff sacks come out of both saddle bags and they come in. It's incredible. <laughs> it's so nice. <sighs> anyway, as you can see by the background behind me, we are in a hotel room. If you remember, I believe the last thing that I told you was that I was going to try and find the campsite. Obviously that didn't happen. I make backups. I always have backups. And every single one of my backup campsites was closed. Despite my thorough research saying that every single one of those campsites is due to be open for the season by now. One of them 
one of them had a sign up on the gate saying that the work crew was there working on making it so that they could open, but alas, it was not open. But this hotel room is gorgeous, and it was under $100. Hard to ask for a whole lot more than that, <laughs> especially when it is dark. <laughs> We're at the Quality Inn in Silo, Washington. It's a beautiful room. The lady was very, very kind and made sure that I had a room with a window so that I could see my motorcycle. And she said if there was not a parking spot in front of my window that she would let me park the motorcycle right up front um, on the sidewalk so that somebody could always be watching my bike. It was very, very kind. There is a parking spot outside my window and I was able to bring in pretty much everything that was valuable besides the motorcycle. Not exactly the view that I had planned to share with you guys, but such is life. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna make dinner and then I'm gonna go to bed early for once. <laughs> I suppose I owe you a bit of an explanation of why I'm toting around a front tire. Everything looked fine. I mean, like, I knew I was gonna have to replace my front tire sooner than later. That's why I bought one. That's why I have one. But I looked at it and I was like, how am I get to Montana back on that? That's fine. For the record, I run uh, Continental TKC70s. They're not super cheap, so I try to get as much life out of them as I possibly can before I replace them, essentially. Well, literally a few minutes before I left yesterday, I was doing my last bit of chain maintenance and checked my tire pressure and noticed that my front tire had a little bit more concerning amount of wear on it than I had first thought and uh, hence why there is now a brand new front tire strapped to my duffel bag so that I can take it to Montana and get to a place where my brother and I can take off my front wheels and they'll have fresh rubber for the trip back. No big deal. <laughs> I'm really tempted to take a picture of it and send a picture to Tim Burke and ask him if I'm doing the overlanding thing, right? <laughs> P.S. If you guys don't follow Tim Burke, uh, go over to Instagram, Tim Burke Photo. Go follow him. He's awesome. Traveled around the world for like four years on a BMW. Uh, I was making a joke about the tire thing because like he carried a pair of brand new tires through like, I want to say it was like half of Africa. <laughs> Because he didn't want to replace his tires uh, before they were done, done. Anyhow, I'm going to get everything packed up in my last round of the room. And today we're going to hit Yakima Canyon, which is always beautiful. And then skedaddle our way to Thompson Falls, Montana. Go see my grandma. Mm. Probably not the best way to carry a tire, but you know, we do what works. <laughs> oh, you know what we still need to do? We need to put sunscreen on. I don't know if you would have noticed, I was giving you my little update in the room, but I have uh, got a little bit of sun. If you haven't watched it already, definitely go and check out. I went to the Tulip Festival with Chris from For the Love Knobs. Did I bring sunscreen for that day? No, no, I did not. <laughs> so I suffered the consequences. I have a heckin' sunburn on the back of my neck, all over my face and the tops of my hands and just a little bit of my forearms. So I'm nursing the sunburn as well on this trip, which is always interesting. This is mineral sunscreen so that it's not liquid, so it doesn't explode wherever I put it because it got hot. All righty, get the show on the road.
getting a little bit colder. Yesterday it was 70 degrees pretty much all day, and now it's 53. <laughs> so I'm gonna hop off the bike, put the insulated layer back into my jacket. God, Yakima Canyon is beautiful. Oh, also, still not regretting my decision to stop at the hotel last night. There was one campground that I had marked on my map in Yakima Canyon that was open, but the rest were closed, so. <laughs> Uh, the benefits of having a butt pocket on a jacket. <laughs> if you guys ride in the cold and you don't have a merino wool buff, just do yourself a favor and get one. It's like awesome. I used to ride with a fleece buff all the time, but when my nose would run, which is just inevitable in the cold, the moisture would just sit on top of the fleece and like make my nose raw. But merino wool draws that moisture away. Serious life upgrade. Definitely a little bit more expensive than a fleece buff, but so worth it in my opinion, especially if you do a lot of riding in the cold, you know, raw skin versus a, a few extra bucks. I think it's worth it. <laughs> Alrighty. miles later. I'm now in Soap Lake, Washington. I was gonna go to the bathroom, gonna make myself some lunch. All of the bathrooms are closed and the visitor center is closed so I can't complain about it either. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep going north. I'm gonna do something a little bit different than I planned. Just keep going north along the lake here. Go up to Cooley City I think it is and then head on over on two and follow two up to Sandpoint and then go into Montana that way. But uh, I gotta find myself a bathroom. You wanted to know that. I know you did. I'm keeping you updated. found a bathroom. Downside, this is not the best place to set up to make lunch. So the search continues for that front, but uh, Highway 2 is beautiful. This is a beautiful road. Can't believe I've never been up here, but that's why we travel, right? To see new things, to see pretty things, discover new places, all that stuff. Anyway, back on the road. had some delicious sushi. This it is. Midori sushi and teriyaki here in Spokane. I'm so glad that I stopped and had food because I didn't realize how kind of chilled I had become. So putting on my fleece, making the last three hours to Thompson Falls. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's stay up all night. Give our hearts a new beginning when we fell in love. I'm very, very cold, but I made it. <laughs> you won. 
I'm very cold. Yeah, I, I just rode with him. I was afraid of it. Uh, and I was, I was just, I was 18 then. I had never been. That was my first time even on a motorcycle or in the back of a motorcycle. That was in the 60s. So when we would get down where he was working, when he'd be busy and stuff, then I would go around the, just the parking lot and ride and, and didn't shift or anything because I was, even today, that it was always my biggest fear yeah. is shifting. I had that fear in there until he got hurt. And I there was no bandages or anything for him, and I had to go to the store. We had got ridden in on the bike that morning, and that so that was what we had. So I just jumped on it and went not thinking. I didn't even think about it. So I get back, and, and, and then he couldn't keep me off of it. <laughs> <laughs> He'll tell you the same thing, you know, yeah. <laughs> Well, after we split up and then I went, you know, with, with Jim, we had every kind of bike in the world then. You know, I mean, we had road bikes and cross country and motocross and drag bikes and, you know, I mean, it, it maybe not all at one time, but at different, you know, times over the thing. So, yeah. you know, whenever we were where we had a motorcycle, we were on motorcycles. And that was in the 70s. And when, then we, when we went back to Oregon, we got, that was when we got into the cross country. And we'd go to High Desert, Christmas Valley, up in that area. And they'd have 50-mile runs and 100-mile runs. And they, but they didn't have it for women. But I wanted to go ride. I couldn't actually sign up and ride because I wasn't allowed to. As soon as the dust fly, I'd go, I'd take off and go. And a lot of times would come in where I actually should have got a trophy, and didn't, but I wasn't. Signed up to ride, so I couldn't, you know, I wasn't a rider. And that's how you had to ride in those days, you know. Good morning, beautiful people, or should I say good afternoon? We are in Thompson Falls, Montana. I got to my grandmother's house last night. It was 39 degrees when I got to her house, a little bit different than the 57 that we started the day. <laughs> I got to spend a wonderful morning with my grandmother, asking her all kinds of questions about her history of riding motorcycles. Maybe I will share that with you. I haven't decided yet. I did record all of it on audio, um, just to have it for myself. Um, but I'm thinking about editing it up and sharing it with you guys because I think it's super cool to talk to somebody who was a female motorcyclist in the 60s and 70s and she did cross country, she did drag racing, so it's just really cool. I mean, my grandma's pretty awesome. <laughs> anyway, we are back on the road again today. We are heading to the Bitterroot Valley about three hours, not too bad, um, but it is after 3 p.m. So we are racing with the sun yet again. I just couldn't bring myself to leave when I was supposed to. I, I love talking to my grandma. Hopefully I get to spend more time with her this year than I did last year. It is what it is. We're heading home. Yeah. Hope that you guys enjoyed this video and got something out of it make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button if you did huge huge shout to my patrons on patreon they make these videos possible i would not be able to do this without them if you would like to support the channel for as little as one dollar a month you can get early access to videos like these ad free before the rest of the world over on my patreon links down in the description if that's not up your alley that is totally okay i also have an etsy and a repable store for my US peeps, Etsy is where you can find stickers, prints, and original art 
hand packaged and sent to you by me. For my international folks, Redbubble is probably just going to be the easiest and cheapest shipping option for you. If you cannot support me monetarily right now, that is absolutely okay. I appreciate you guys just for being here every single week. And question for my end screen crew. Thanks, you guys. I'll see you later.